Hi guys, in this video we'll be going through how to create a scatter plot in Excel. So what I have here is data arranged so that I have the x-axis information on the left hand size, side and the y-axis information on the right hand side. Um, so what I have is car A is moved from some position um, in two seconds it's six meters away in, 12, in 4 seconds it's 12.8 meters, in 6 seconds 18.1 meters and so on. Um, car B we're tracking where its position is um, as time goes as well. So what we can do is we can plot time versus the car position um, by selecting these two columns, going to um, insert scatter chart and then clicking on um, scatter type. So when we click here, we generate this graph. Um, we can add an x-axis and a y-axis, um, what would you call that, uh, label. So we can go to add chart element and then here we've got axis titles and then you can click on primary horizontal to add an x-axis label and then do the same, go click here, add chart element, click on axes titles and primary vertical and then that gets us a y-axis label. Now if we click on that, um, maybe delete what's written there, uh, we can replace that with um, distance in meters um, and then for the x-axis we can select that and delete, type in time measured in seconds. Your title here should say um, what's written in the graph below. So that will say uh, distance versus time for car A. Um, sometimes it's good to write down the date when the information was obtained. So in this case, we could write um, 2019 um, June, for example. Okay, um, so that's for pl plotting one set of data. Sometimes we'd like to plot two sets of data, so maybe we want car A and car B on this set of information. Um, so I'll do that from scratch, so you can see that from the beginning, so we'll delete this. Um, so here I'll select the data, um, time, car A and car B, all as one set like this. Go to insert, uh, go to scatter, and click on this option. So here we see car A and car B, um, the information automatically um, being plotted here, um, car A in blue and car B, car B written in orange. And then so we can add in our axes labels in here as well. Now what might be interesting to you is to find out the gradient for these two. Um, so if I click on the bottom one and I go uh, right click and go to add trend line, um, an option comes up to create a trend line. Um, if we scroll down, there is a option over here to um, to add a equation, so display the equation. So we can see that um, it's in y equals mx plus c form, where we see the gradient and the y-intercept. Um, we can force the intercept to go through zero if we want, um, and we can display an r squared value. That tells us about how well um, the data matches up with um, the data points. So um, when that's close to one, that means the data is very closely aligned with um, the graph that we've got at the top. If it starts getting much la uh, much smaller than that, then um, we have um, less of an agreement with the equation that's being shown there. Um, so I can do that for the top data here. So uh, click, right click, add trend line. Um, and then we can choose if it's linear or logarithmic, usually you can tell, in this case it really looks like it's linear. And then we go to set intercept, display equation, and display R squared. And here we see for the orange data for car Ruby, um, we have a gradient of 5.0127. So um, if this is distance versus time, that's the velocity um, in meters per second. And over here we see the velocity of car uh, A, which is in uh, 2.9843 meters per second. 
Um, so over here we should include um, our title, so distance versus time for car A and car B. We can include our title, so add chart element, axes, titles, and primary. We'll change this to time in seconds. And then we can go to axes, titles, primary, vertical. And we type in uh, distance. In meters. So all of that information is in the design tab. So look out for um, the design ribbon, I mean, um, and in the chart layouts group. All right. So um, I hope that helps you um, with trying to represent data. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to include them in the in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye bye. Um, I missed something. Uh, something you can also do is you might want to print out this data. Um, so there's a couple of ways you could do that. Uh, one is we can go to File and Print. Um, if you have the chart selected, then it would be able to print the selected chart. Um, so you will have to pr pick an um, appropriate printer to be able to do that. Um, that's probably enough. Um, if you if you don't have the chart selected, um, we could print um, a selected area by selecting the section, go file and print. Um, in this case, it says print active sheets. Um, I think landscape's probably better for how I've got that data. And if I fit that to one page, then it should scale to fit up the whole page. Okay, so um, hopefully that helps. Um, I'll see you later. Thank you for watching and bye-bye. Uh,